There's only one place where I see people moving around as much metal as you guys do here in the forge, but we can't have you guys forge there, so we brought it to you. And that place is... The gym. Right here in this setup, we've got a lot of different types of steel. Some of that steel is hardenable, some of it is not. You'll have to combine one piece of hardenable steel and one piece of mild steel to forge a signature blade in your signature style that falls within the following parameters. The length of the blade must be between 11 and 14 inches, and the overall length must not exceed 22 inches. Your three-hour forge time starts now. Off to the races. Cool, common collection, Jake. Me and the other contestants, we all kind of pitched in and helped one another get our steel. Take the whole thing over. How do you want to chop it up? I think I can tell if a steel is hardenable or not by what it was used for. Is it being put under a lot of stress? Is it meant to flex but not bend? I'm choosing the barbell and the twisted barbell. The straight bar has to hold more weight. So I think the straight barbell will be much harder steel than the twisted barbell. Making a sand mine would be the easiest way to go about making the blade I want to make because it's the easiest way to stack it up and get in the forge quickly. I determined that the curved barbell is softer steel, so I weld it onto the outer side of the longer piece of hardenable steel in the middle. And I'm a little nervous, but I think I got this. Jake has grabbed one of the uh, bars to the dumbbell. I've seen people put 900 pounds on that thing and it flex but never breaks, so. I know that it's going to be a good high carbon steel. I'm going to do a sand my Damascus with the mild steel from the casing of the, the bench itself. It's super important to get your steel clean before you do a forged weld. Hot steel! Because any impurities can damage your weld and get you not to stick. My game plan is to get my barbell flattened out. I got two pieces of mild steel cut out. I'm just going to go ahead and stack them on there and forge weld them as fast as I can and get it rocking. I pick the steel off the leg curl, get the good piece of hardenable steel, try to get the blade shaped out first, then we'll add the secondary piece into it. My forge welding skills was a little better. I'd try a Sam Mai or a taco or something like that. I'm going to try to kind of play it safe. I have to lose some meat off of this, grind it to shape, and heat treat it. Rex is really getting that blade ground down to a really fine look. I'm going to use a piece of mild steel from the frame and the handle. Being that the test is a uh, plate chop, I'm putting the mild steel in the handle. That way, uh, when it takes that big jolt, it doesn't shake loose or, uh, or come apart. I use the Sam Mai technique so that the outer shell of the blade is a little bit softer and can absorb some of the shock from smashing into that weight. She's stuck, baby. My welds seem like they have stuck. Motherfucker! And I realized that there was some D-lambs along the spine of the blade. Hoping I can get these D-lambs out of here. I don't want to grind all the mild steel off, but I need to fix these D-lambs along the spine of the blade. Scratched it is quenched it. Oh, yeah. It's warped. It's warped all over the place. So I'm going to do a second quench. I am freaking out. I never have warps. I never have this problem at home. When you do multiple quenches, you can get cracking, your welds to split. You can get all sorts of kinds of problems. If I were Braxton, what I'd do is I'd get some of that angle iron, I'd put it in a vise, I'd do my quench, and get it in that vise and clamp it down so it cools the rest of the way in a vise being held straight. Do you suppose that he's going for an edge quench? That looks exactly like uh, what he's up to. Quench it again, and I have the same problem. It's got a little warp and a tang. Not hard. Yeah. Man! And Braxton is back in the forge, man. Oh. I don't believe the Braxton blade was cold enough to get hard. You really have to wait till the very end of that cooling cycle for it to skate a pile. I'm not going to move on to the second round. Pretty sure if I can't get this warp out, it's pretty bad. I'm going in for the quench right now, man. My biggest concern at this moment is picking up a warp, and uh, I'm hoping I haven't ground off all my mild steel. I'm pretty sure I haven't, but we'll see. I like it. 
Jake's blade is maybe one of the thinnest we've ever had come out of a round one. And narrow. Five minutes! Yeah, boy. Yeah, it looks like Kyle just clinched. Yep. That looks pretty straight. Looks pretty man. straight. I think she's good. Braxton just quenched again. It's taken me four quenches to get this blade to the straightness that I want it. It's not as hard as I would like it, but it's gonna have to work. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of competition is over. Blade Smiths. To test the strength and durability of your blades as well as the overall construction of your knives, I will be batoning them mercilessly into this weight plate. Remember, this test is all about what the plate does to your knives and not what your knives do to the plate. Braxton, you're up first. You ready for this? I feel a little nervous, but go ahead. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that is a piece of metal they're going to be hitting. My blade didn't get as hard as I wanted to, so I'm starting to cringe. Good job, man. Yeah. Well, Braxton, first things first, you can see where I hit those weight plates. The first area is still sharp, but bent over. The second two areas have significant rolling. That being said, the rest of your knife is very sharp, extremely attractive looking knife. Well done. Thank you. Kyle, you're up next. What are you thinking? Let her eat. All right. I am pretty sure my blade can handle it. You know, I made it pretty thick, pretty robust to handle that kind of abuse. But uh, it's hard not to be concerned when they're going to bash it into a cast iron plate. How was that? Kyle. It broke. Your tang snapped in half. It's at a very critical spot. Can't hold on to this for further testing. It broke in the handle where I uh, forged welded that mile steel. Kyle, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure in the handle on the second strike. However, you're not out of this competition just yet. Jake, that means that your blade needs to survive two licks against that plate. How are you feeling right now? Um, pretty nervous. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's see what happens. Ben? I know that my blade's gonna be pretty durable, but my edge is pretty thin. I'm hoping that mine can outperform his, because at this point, it's my only hope. It'll make it. One more. As Ben goes to make the second strike on my blade, it's all in slow motion for me. My heart is in my throat. Jake, congratulations, your blade held up. Kyle, because your weapon suffered a catastrophic failure in the handle and can no longer continue with testing, I have to eliminate you from this competition. Hey, man, it was a pleasure. Blades are only as strong as their weakest point, and uh, mine was in the handle. I may not be the Forge and Fire champion, but finishing a blade and uh, being here was uh, awesome. Definitely do it again in a heartbeat.